the only answer to that would be that I, I would have to leave at the end of the Sting of Life tour. Um, and I think it was it was pretty obvious to me and to everybody else that, that I didn't want to be in the band anymore. So, I mean, I think it was, it was no great surprise. Um, I mean, the bottom line was that at the end of that tour, I came away from that tour pretty unhappy with it, and I just really wanted out. Um, and then just after I sent the demos for the album that would have been released after Symbol of Life, and for the first time ever, I just wasn't inspired at all by the material. You know, I didn't really feel like I could contribute anything to it, and I kind of knew then that my time with the band had, had come, really. Um, and a couple of days later, I got the phone call, and the guys obviously felt the same, and I was released from my contract. I think, you know, the term aggression is probably quite harsh. I think that there's always tension in bands. I mean, what people have to remember is, you know, unless you've actually lived in a touring environment, it's like if you if you have a disagreement with somebody at your job, you know, when you go home from your work, you know, you can get away from it. When you're in a touring environment, any sort of tension or any sort of disagreements, they do get sort of amplified quite a lot. So, I mean, obviously, you know, where can you go if you're on a tour bus and you have a disagreement with somebody? You know, you can't get away from it. So, they kind of, those sort of tensions kind of fester, really. Not really. I mean, for me, I've kind of spent 10 years playing, you know, the same kind of music. And it's kind of, as a musician, I found that I wasn't really pushing myself anymore. You know, and that, again, that can be quite frustrating as a musician. You know, it kind of got to the point where, you know, we'll do the same songs every night and we were playing to click tracks, so there's no sort of area for me to sort of do any kind of improvisation. It was all very, very set. And I just felt like my drumming stuff for it. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do once I uh, part of those parallel was actually get back into playing drums again. You know, and actually sort of just, you know, rediscover my, my passion for playing the drums again. Um, so, you know, I didn't, I wasn't really interested in joining the band, I just wanted to sort of get back into a rehearsal studio and actually get into playing myself, you know, and sort of get myself playing up to a, to a level that I felt sort of satisfied with again. I know you've asked for just one, but the three albums that, that I am proud of uh, would have to be Draconian Times, which is my first album with the band. Uh, I'm really proud of the one second album, and I'm really proud of the Sins of Life albums. It was, it, was, it was really satisfying for me to sort of start with an album that I was really proud of, and, and end with an album I was really proud of. You know, but they're the, they're the three albums that, that I look back and think, yeah, you know, I was really glad to be a part of the band for those records. You know, but you know, that, that, that's the that, that's the pinnacle for me. It was kind of funny, it was never my intention, you know, because I kind of, I felt like I'd sort of been there and bought the t-shirt with that style of music. You know, and like I said earlier, you know, I was never really a fan of goth rock sort of music. So, obviously, I got, I got a phone call at the blue from Eddie. You know, I like Eddie, and she, you know, really enthusiastic about it, and that, that was kind of quite infectious, that enthusiasm, really. So, I, I think, you know, although, obviously, you know, I thought at first, you know, is this guy like a complete lunatic or what, you know, I wasn't too sure, but I thought, well, you know, I'm sort of prepared to listen to what he's got to say and stuff, and obviously, you know, he doesn't he, really sort of impress me, so I thought, well, you know, let's, 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 let's take it a step further, let's have a listen to the demos. So he sent me out a bit of demos for it, and I just thought that, you know, it was really, really good stuff, you know, I mean, I've always been a fan of really good hooks in souls and, you know, really good riffs and, and great vocal lines, and, and even though it was very sort of basic demos, you know, and it was quite, quite crude sounding, you could hear how great these songs were, you know, even on a, on these demos. And I thought, what if these songs have come across to me in such a great way, just in demo form, then I really felt that, obviously, properly recorded, you know, in a decent studio, you know, would, would really bring out the best of them. So, as soon as I heard it, you know, I just kind of, you know, within a few days, I, I thought, you know, I could hear the melody lines going around in my head, and I just thought, you know what, this is, you know, this is an album I really want to be involved in. You know, it was never a conscious decision to, to make a comeback on, you know, on a, on a goth rock record, you know, if you could have come out when the songs had been lame, you know, I wouldn't have wanted to do it, but just the songs, you know, really hit me, you know, the quality of the songs, and I thought, yeah, you know, I, I would definitely want to be involved in this project. It was a real joy to do the first Creations Kids record, I mean, just the whole thing, you know, just sort of a, 
you know, the whole recording process and, and you know, becoming good friends with, with Ian and, and Eddie, you know, it was just a really nice environment to be in and working with Mark Miner. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it's definitely something that, you know, if the guys want to sort of go around again, you know, I, I definitely would have a chat with Eddie about possibly the next record. Well, I said, I still do a few sessions, you know, I mean, I'm still active playing those, um, and my, my big passion now is teaching, you know, I just love teaching drums, I mean, I learned so much over the years of playing now, it's such a, you know, rewarding thing to be able to put something back. Not really, I mean, like I said, I think, you know, when you look at your life, I think, you know, everything is like a picture, you know, and it, and it, and it sort of sums up different parts of your life, you know, and, and I think, you know, I've been very, very fortunate that, you know, but there's been a lot of opportunities come my way, and I've had the chance to enjoy, you know, a fantastic life, you know, through through being a musician, you know, and like I said, it's kind of, it's funny how things work out sometimes, you know, but I do feel very blessed that, you know, that I've always sort of, been sort of, always kept sort of quite busy work-wise, you know, so I've always been able to play drums, you know, so I think for anybody that can, you know, continue to do that and, you know, and still have that passion and, and desire to do that, I think he's very fortunate, you know. I had some great times in Paradise last time, don't get me wrong, you know, it was like, you know, we were, I got to tour the world several times and, you know, I made some really good friends and, you know, I got to experience some really great things, you know, so it's, it's one of those things, it's kind of, you know, I think... Yeah, I think as a musician, you kind of set yourself a sort of goal, you know, what you want to achieve as a musician. And I think, you know, when you say, you know, I'd love to do this, 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 and this, I think once you kind of ticked all those boxes, I think I just got to the point and I just thought, well, I've kind of set out and achieved everything that I ever wanted to. You know what I mean? So I kind of, I didn't feel there was anything else being in Paradise Lost that, that I could achieve, you know. Well, I had some great times. Like I said, these are great memories to keep, you know, but it's, you know, you, it's not, you should never look backwards. I mean, I'm, I'm always a strong believer that, you know, always look forward, always be proud of, you know, your past and, you know, it's just about always moving forward. <laughs>